Yep. Uh, hello, good evening. So today's session is going to be on uh, TDE versus RMAN backup and recovery scenarios. So, you know, most of the customers nowadays, uh, security is one of their uh, major challenge and major concerns. And uh, they're going with a lot of, uh, you know, TDE, uh, not only TDE, and they're, they're opting for some other, uh, you know, uh, te technology to encrypt and uh, keep their data, uh, you know, uh, securely and, you know, uh, uh, in case of any 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 uh, data loss or any any data theft, uh, you know how how data securely they can maintain it, right? So TD is one of the most uh, recommended uh, uh, product uh, by Oracle, and uh, if you are a Oracle customer, uh, they prefer to go with the TD rather than other third-party uh, encryption because TD is very much compatible with uh, with with uh, Oracle, and also it is very much compatible with uh, you know all it is it is in incompatible with ARM and backups and recovery scenarios. So you know uh, nowadays uh, most of the banking sector or most of the finance sector, whatever uh, we deal with. Uh, they are they are enabled with the TDE. So, and whenever you go for backups and recovery, uh, if the TDE is configured, that is where the challenges comes. How to deal with those kind of scenarios, right? So that is what uh, today's main agenda is. Basically, we concentrate on backups and recoveries, especially for the TDE databases. And agenda is going to be. I'll just quickly cover an Armen licensing and Armen backup sets and uh, image copies. How what is the difference and how it works, and the TDE. Uh, how you can en enable the TDE, like already we covered a lot of sessions on TDE, but I quickly cover these three major aspects, like TDE configured with the file, that is a software encryption and OKV, that is again third party like Oracle software and HSM. These are the three concepts I'll quickly touch base and then uh, quickly we jump into the demo session, that's our main backups and recoveries. And finally, we can take it uh, some Q and A sessions, and uh, what I'll do, like during the Q and A session, I'm going to unmute everyone. If you have any questions, you can directly ask. And meantime, if you have any questions and concerns, you can directly type in here in the chat. So as usual, like I kept everyone on mute to, to just to avoid any disturbance. Right? Let Let's get started with the first topic. Uh, Armen licensing, right? Uh, one of the basic questions uh, everyone will ask is Armen. Uh, you know, licensed, do we need to take an extra license for Armen? The answer is no. Uh, if you are going with, uh, uh, you know, control file for your backup information, right? Like if you are already aware, uh, backup information can be stored in your control file or in a separate database that is recovery catalog database. So if you are uh, not using recovery catalog, then you no need to opt for any license uh, uh, separately for uh, Armen that comes with your uh, database license. So you just uh, need to use, make use of that Armen backups and recoveries. Uh, you can just make use of that Armen tool. There, there won't be any uh, extra license for Armen. Uh, be with, go for any compression, any encryption, whatever you use it, there won't be any extra charge or there won't be any need of licensing uh, if you are not using any recovery catalog. So in case, uh, if you're using a recovery catalog and if you're using your enterprise repository uh, to manage your, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, manage your uh, backup information using enterprise manager repository, that is uh, uh, OEM repository. So then that is where you need to go for enterprise license restrictives. So restrictives in the sense, uh, you just take a license for that enterprise repository and you can just make use of that enterprise repository for backups and recovery purposes. And only for backups and recovery purposes, if you're taking a license, that is where it comes restricted license, restricted use. So you are using that OEM uh, for only backups and recoveries and to store your repository database, repository information of your backups and recoveries, uh, all the backup information. So that's where restricted license comes into picture and you can pay, uh, you know, not 100% uh, of the license cost. You will be like some, uh, you know, a subsidy and you know other things. Uh, and then, if you want to protect that uh, OEM database, and that is where you need to go for the full enterprise license, or you know, based upon the whatever the category you you opt. Uh, you know, if you can basically look into licensing, uh, how Oracle will sold their license uh, based upon number of users connected to database, or based upon the number of CPUs, or based upon the number of servers or the site license or the enterprise license. So 
anyone you can opt uh, when you are dealing when you are choosing a license for any particular database but whereas when it comes to enterprise repository database uh, for especially for oem to manage your uh, backup information so you can go with the enterprise license with the restricted use so in the sense you can use that database to manage only your backup information for the repository store so that is where you will get a lot of discount and subsidies with from oracle and you can uh, you will be having agreement for the restricted use so you cannot have that enterprise manager enterprise manager database with a, a data guard and you know some other purpose you, you will not, you are not supposed to use that if you use it and again when when oracle do auditing then you have to pay for that licensing so that's a quick brief introduction about licensing the main thumb rule is if you are using uh, you know your control file information to store your backup that is where no no catalog no recovery catalog database comes into picture that is where you no need to pay any extra license for that and if you are having any separate uh, if you are having separate uh, uh, recovery catalog database that is where you need to buy a license uh, for you know enterprise uh, restricted use license so this is a brief idea about licensing and in in both the scenario whether it is uh, you know uh, with with recovery catalog or without recovery catalog if you enable your encryption and you enable your compression and all the features are available along with armin you no need to pay extra license for those encryption and compression okay that's about the armin licensing and these are the quick mouse links you can you can go through it uh, for the more information how it works uh, because always understanding the licensing is a is a challenging uh, even if you are like you are like 10 years or 20 years of experience so you'll be having a lot of confusion with the uh, with the uh, arm uh, with with the database licensing be it uh, you know larman or be it uh, encryption be it a security or be it a database uh, you know, again in database uh, you know enterprise licensing and standard licensing so many things and again they will divide under number of user connection number of cpus and number of servers and site information and enterprise license so you know this is critical part you need to try to understand so my next topic is going to be a uh, deal with only licensing part so that probably will take it in the next week or uh, coming next to next week right so that is about a quick licensing and going to the next uh, armen backup set versus image copies so what exactly uh, armen backup set and armen image copies so armen backup set is nothing but uh, the name itself indicate backup set backup set in the sense you are grouping a backup piece for example if you see here i have data file 4 data file 3 data file 2 these are my uh, database data files which resides under os and if you take a single data file backup that is going to be your backup piece and if you take a single data file backup of this data file 3 that's going to be the backup piece and if you take a data file 4 backup alone that is again going to be your backup piece and if you combine those backup piece and you will be making a backup set so armen will decide uh, you know with your i will show you that uh, you know how you can define backup set and you can you can set the limit for your backup set uh, everything you can define in armen properties so you just imagine backup set is nothing but a group of backup pieces for example data file 1 i take one backup piece and data file 2 i can take one more backup piece and data file 4 i can take one more backup piece and combining all those backup piece you know armen will make a backup set so that is as good as you know combination of your backup pieces and then what is image copies image copies are nothing but whatever os file system directly you are copying as a you know image copy for example i have a data file 1 i can directly copy data file 1 as it is that is become your image copy and whereas in backup set backup set like for example data file 2 data file 3 data file 4 is all four three data file together i made one uh, backup set so in this backup set what happens armen will take only block level information and it will take only those modified block and the the block which has a data and that will become your backup piece and that all the backup piece together makes a backup set and there won't be any empty blocks here whereas in image copies if i have a 10 gb of data file and directly the 10 gb file will be copied as a image file and inside that 10 gb if i have like a, a 3 gb uh, empty blocks all those empty blocks will be copied 
copied as a you know image copies that is where look image copies so image copies always just a cop os os come os level copy that is a huge in size whereas armen a uh, backup piece or the backup set is going to be only the the actual data blocks will be copied and you know uh, armen can understand those backup pieces so whereas if you compare these backup uh, sets or backup pieces which are lesser in size as compared to the data file because if this data file is 100 gb if you do modification like you know delete some data or insert some data there will be uh, you know uh, modified blocks and some data will be uh, unused blocks right so those all blocks unused or empty blocks will not be copied to backup piece or backup information so that is why you know most of the industry they will go ahead with the uh, backup set and you know uh, if you go with the backup backup set armen backup as image copies you have to bear uh, you know uh, more storage space more backup storage space if your database is 10 terabyte you will be having a 10 terabyte of uh, backup in backup data and if you are having a 10 terabyte of database if you use a backup set hardly it is going to be around 2 terabyte or 3 terabyte so that's a huge uh, storage save and again when it comes to the recovery the image copy recovery is very easy because you no need to do any extra task over there you just need to convert image copies as a data file and that will be you know converted as a data file and then you can build your uh, uh, duplicate database or uh, clone database or the standby database very quickly whereas using a backup set you have to convert all the modified blocks into data files and you know the backups recovery and restore scenario will be a, a much longer uh, time taking process whereas image copies just to convert switch image copies to a data file so database so that directly converts whatever the image file as a data file that is very quicker in manner so it has own uh, pros and cons both backup sets and uh, image copies so that's about the backup set and image copies so how you can take a, a, a backup set backup as a backup uh, backup as a backup set database that will make a backup set backup and if you want to compress that you have to mention backup as a compressed backup set and if you want to take a image copies you have to mention like backup as a copy database copy database keyword will take just as it is copy of your database right so that's about uh, uh image copy so uh, here question comes uh, i made a compression here right uh, when it comes to the backup set you can do a compression when it comes to the uh, image copies the compression is not allowed here as i already told you uh, image copies is just a replica it's just a copy of my data file it's just like image copy uh, you know uh, you, you can say this is just a xerox copy right uh, you know whatever the empty blocks whatever the blocks with the data or whatever the uh, uh, blocks which are modified all the data whatever my data file looks like it, you are going to copy everything as it is even though empty blocks or uh, you know modified blocks blocks with the data everything will be copied here that is where you know there is no point there is no sense you know compressing uh, your image copies that is not allowed here that is not supported compression is not supported in case of image copies yeah like a physical copy yes that's correct that's a physical copy so Uh, uh, you can say that Xerox copy. Xerox copy. If you take a Xerox copy of your single, uh, uh, whatever resume or whatever in resume, whether you have a blank space or whether you have a data, everything will be copied, right? Similarly, like you know, it's a kind of a Xerox copy. It's just a replica, just a OS copy. Uh, you know where Armen can understand. So you can use it Armen command to switch back as a data file. So that's about backup set and uh, uh, it's like a doing a CP on OS level. yeah it is kind of uh, cp at os level but uh, you know armen can understand that if you have image copies you you cannot use it with other utilities you can say that it's kind of os cp command but internally armen has a different method to copy or method uh, switch that data file to image copy that's a different but ideally if you think it uh, traditional way it's just a cp right so that's about backup set and image copies uh going to the next okay again i said compression uh, backups uh, uh, compression is uh, only allowed in in the backup set and uh, in the image copies compression is not possible so you can make use of that configure compression algorithm you can make it high medium low basic whatever you, or whatever compression level you want you can go with that and uh, this is a command set compression algorithm you can set it or if you don't want to set anything at armen properties you can you can use of this command backup as a compressed backup set 
uh, at run level you are making it as a compressed backup set uh okay what if uh, vikas is asking what if what if they are using a third party tool third party tool i'll come into a later point uh, there are too many uh, backup tools in the market comvault uh, data whale uh, rubric or uh, you know uh, even uh, uh, even uh, uh, oracle jdlr so just to, just to give one more point here uh, image copy concept uh, uh, jdlr if you might have heard oracle jdlr product so they will use a backup use a image copies they will not use a backup as a backup set so the reason being why they use a image copies there's a there's a huge advantages of uh, using a image copies that is the incremental merge i will quickly cover that what is incremental merge uh, in later slides so let's keep going further okay so southern has does the compression of backup will take a longer time uh, uh of course uh, southern like uh, if you enable compression or encryption uh, that will take uh, little extra time than your normal uh, the backup timing because it has to do lot of algorithm it has to convert your uh, data and then uh, keep in a readable format where armen can understand right so it is expected some little delay when you enable compression and uh, encryption right so going further uh encryption right again encryption if i talk about a backup set and image copies in both the scenarios encryption is allowed so encryption you can go with a transparent uh, encryption that is with the help of wallet that's a default method most of the organization will go with a wallet encryption and there's a password encryption so very rare case uh, this password encryption is like you know when you are taking a backup that is when you have to give that the the password for your backup pieces that is where the password encryption comes into picture and dual mode encryption is it has it is supported both uh, uh, wallet as well as password based encryption but uh, you know when you go with the password based encryption that is uh, risky because once you once you forget what password you are given during the backup there is no way you can make use of those backup information that's the one thing and always go with the wallet uh, based encryption because you no need to remember any password because your password is already available with the wallet and once you open your wallet then you no need to pass any uh, any any uh, uh, that wallet password during the uh, backups or during the recovery so everything will be taken from your uh, wallet so that's about the encryption again uh, for this make use of encryption you have to enable uh, one of the uh, admin properties i'll show you that uh, okay so going to the next topic uh tde like already we covered a lot of, as i said like we covered a lot of topics on tde uh, tde can be enabled at file level that is your software level encryption uh, with uh, which no need of any license you can just uh, uh, keep your wallet inside your uh, database server where it's running and you can that's a software kind of wallet and okv and hsm are kind of hardware kind of wallet uh, and these are like separate license you have to purchase from okv from oracle and hsm uh, i'm not sure because i never worked on the hsm these are the three methods of uh, encryption is allowed uh, with with wallet uh, with especially for the tde the file level is a one uh, you have to mention during at your database level uh, tde configuration key store configuration you have to mention file that means you are keeping your wallet file uh, wallet key and wallet information as a file inside your database server and you can read the uh, keys from that wallet and you can uh, uh, take a backup and you can use the same wallet file for the restore and recovery and when it comes to the okv and hsm you have to install okv server uh, on the different uh, uh, server and hsm also same thing you have to install that uh, hsm software on the different server and you have to install that uh, agent from okv or hsm server they will, they will provide you the agent and you need to install agent on your database server and then that agent will communicate with those okv and hsm server and this okv and hsm server will holds your wallet keys and encryption keys and then whenever you take a backup and recoveries the all the password will be retrieved from okv and hsm server so this is one of my uh, next topic so probably next weekend i am going to install okv uh, all the server configuration i have done so i downloaded the software i am ready to deploy my uh, okv uh, setup so this is one of the uh, very very interesting session i am going to do it in the live so uh, that's why i kept it on hold server and software installation software download everything is ready so in probably in next week i will take a okv installation with a, with a live webinar so that you know 
uh, everyone can understand even this okay we i am doing it for the second time so this will give you good idea for everyone so this one this one we can take it to next week uh, okay we installation because i need to do some testing in okay we that that's the, that's the reason so this is about the tde so already we covered a lot of things on the tde i'll just quickly uh, show you that uh, this is our fourth webinar where we uh, went with the tde live implementation on the 19c database already uh, these are the steps i have used it so and then uh, this is a step where i defined uh, wallet as a file and that will be stored under uh, uh, Oracle base admin and SID. And this is my Oracle uh, wallet location. Once you define that, uh, you will be seeing this uh, uh, C wallet.sso and uh, ewallet.p12. These are the two files. Once you create wallet, it will create your uh, ewallet.p12. Uh, and once you enable uh, auto login, it will create C wallet.sso. So I will show you this uh, already setup is ready. So if you missed about uh, TDE, so go back to my YouTube channel and refer this uh, uh, webinar four, where it clearly talks about the TDE, right? Uh, now let's jump into the demo session. Uh, these are the uh, different, uh, almost like 18 uh, scenarios I, I have tested in my lab environment. Uh, what I observed uh, with the wallet, right? When you create your wallet on your source database, that wallet you can make it auto login or you can make it password based. What exactly password based and auto login? Password based means you are just creating the wallet and you are manually opening your wallet and manually closing your wallet. In case of if you want to shut down your database, you have to close your wallet manually, log into database, you know, alter uh, database. Uh, close uh, uh, open wallet, right? Let me show you that uh, command. Uh, do you have that command? Alter key, man. okay, this is for auto, auto login. Where is that? Let me search for that. Okay, uh, not this one. Okay, here it is. Administrator key management set key store, open force key store. Uh, there's an open wallet. Let me show you that. I have that command. Okay, yeah, this is one of the command to open, but uh, there's a simple command alter uh, key management uh, open wallet with the, with the password that I'll command, I'll give you that. So every time when you shut down your database, you have to close the wallet. And once you start your database, you have to open that wallet. That's a manual effort. And if you don't want to do that, you have to enable the auto login. Like how you can enable the auto login? This is the command. Uh, you can. Uh, this is open and where's a uh, create auto login, right? This is the auto login command. Administrator key management create auto login. The moment you do this auto login, this is where your C wallet .sso file will get created. If you don't create auto login, this file will not be there, and only this wallet file will be there. And each and every time when you open your database, when you start your database, once you shut down your database, manually you have to close and open your wallet. That's a that's a manual effort you have to do it here. Okay, let me, somebody is doing annotation. Let me clear that. Uh, how to clear that. Um, How to remove that uh, annotation? Anybody know that? Okay, yeah, clear it here. Okay. Okay, fine. Uh, let's take it here. Uh, this is about auto login and password based uh, uh, wallet authentication. And this is again OKV and HSM are two other concepts. So there is no uh, there is no concept like auto login uh, password based. Everything will be managed with uh, OKV and HSM. This is a different topics. I will cover it in my next topic. So then, what are the scenarios I tested? Right, with auto login enabled, I tested eight scenarios. First scenario is, uh, you know, backup as a backup set. That's a ideal uh, scenario, and backup as a image copies. These are the four scenarios. How the four scenarios are communicated? The compression is no, encryption is no. And the compression is yes, encryption is no. And the compression is no, encryption is yes. These are the different combination I have tried with backup as a backup set. And with the backup as a image copies, I have tried uh, uh, these are the two scenarios. And whereas when it comes to the compression, it, which is not supported, I have not tested that scenario for the image copies and password based also. I have tested eight scenarios and 
these are the uh, successful scenarios and these are the failure scenarios right then if you see a restore scenario what i'm talking about restore at your target database without wallet you might be amazed even though wallet is enabled and td enabled i am able to do successful restore uh, how it is possible uh, you know you might have uh, amazed right this is not supported uh, by default if you think if wallet is enabled at your source database your restore should fail if you don't have a wallet at your uh, source database right your database will restore completed your database got open and you can able to do any operations but you will not be able to see those encrypted data those encrypted tables or those encrypted table space and in which scenario it is possible let me take uh, paint and then you know try to explain the, this scenario where is this paint okay okay yeah suppose uh, this is my okay this is my this is my source database let me take this one this is my source database i can take as a this is my raw database and i have enabled uh, td and i have created a table space with encryption and i have created a column encryption right so pro database i have enabled configured my td and i configured my wallet right so and then after configuring wallet you can go wallet with the password based or the auto login whatever it is your configuration is done and now you created some uh, table space encryption and now you did some column encryption and you inserted some data uh, inserted data right everything is done and now at this point of time now at this point of time you are trying to take a full database backup or incremental backup whatever the backup you are trying to trigger a backup here backup as a backup set or image copy you are taken a backup here and then after during the backup assuming that there are no transactions related to your encrypted data for example you have taken a backup at 10 am you started backup at 10 am and backup got completed at 11 am and almost 1 hour 1 hour there are no uh, remember there are no data change there are no data change or there are no data insertion in your table space especially with the table space which are encrypted with the tde and columns which are encrypted with the tde and the tables which are encrypted with the tde in those three uh, uh, conditions there are no data new data coming or new any data modified on that and whatever backup you have taken you can go ahead and restore your database you can go ahead and you can use those backups and you can uh, do a successful restore and you don't need a wallet whatever the wallet you created those wallets are not needed no needed wallets are not needed here because there are no archive logs to apply at your target database which are encrypted right that is where you know you will be able to do a successful restore even though there are uh, even though there is a wallet at your source database without wallet you will be able to do a restore and recovery and you can open your database in read write mode right without wallet and suppose what happens you have you have started your backup you have started your backup at same timing 10 am and backup took around 1 hour 11 am or like 11 am like up to 1 hour your backup ran and during this time there are some data changes i can say there are some data changes in in uh, table space with encryption somebody added some uh, encryption uh, some data file into your encrypted table space and somebody added some uh, data into um, encrypted uh, tables encrypted column tables somebody added some data and what happens if you take armen backup armen will uh, you know backup those uh, chain data right uh, your rk logs will be uh, your rk logs will be shipped into your restore uh, your target database 
and then when you do the restore without wallet your restore will goes fine because that is going to read your data file and it will it will it will do the restore and your restore will fine and when it come to the recovery recovery what happens it has to read all the archive logs it has to read all the archive logs which are all the archive logs not necessarily this uh, encrypted data archive logs the archive logs which are non encrypted data also right so like if you are assuming that you have around uh, 200 uh, uh, around 200 archive logs i can say that around 200 archive logs you have to apply after the restore you have to apply 200 archive logs out of that 200 archive logs you somebody has added some uh, uh, you know uh, some data file into encrypted tables and somebody added data into encrypted tables and that has generated out of this 200 uh, i can say that is around 50 archive logs or with uh, with encrypted data so when it comes to the apply those 50 archive logs that is where your uh, recovery will fail uh, saying i will show you that uh, what message you will will get it let me show you that that is in scenario 2 so it says when it comes to the uh, it is for during the during the backup but uh, during the recovery i'll show you that it says that unable to decrypt a backup it says that unable to apply the archive log uh, due to uh, those data i will show you whether uh, that scenario are captured here this is for the restore it is failing yeah mm, okay not this one okay that uh, error message i not captured but yeah this is what happens when you when you try to apply those archive logs which are uh, which the new data or modified data uh, during the backup and those archive logs are shipped as part of my backup piece and when it comes to the recovery recovery step that is where you know it is unable to read those archive logs and saying wallet not found and wallet is not available wallet is not opened and then that is where you know that that scenario that the, your your database restore or the database clone will get fail and you will not be able to succeed in that scenario in that scenario you have to copy whatever the wallet your production has you have to copy to the source and you have to uh, uh, do the recovery and then the recovery will goes fine right so this is this is where you know i am talking about you will be able to do a successful restore without wallet provided the clause is there won't be any change any change in data or any modified data related to your encrypted data so if there is a change because we cannot control that if it's a, if it's a production database uh, data will be uh, consistently changing and you know uh, you know most of the times that is going to fail but if you are sure about that uh, there won't be any change data during the backup especially related to that encrypted table space or encrypted columns so you can do a restore and recovery without any password so ravi is asking do you mean if any change happens during the backup uh, needs a wallet any change data means only change data which are encrypted like table space encrypted or the column level encrypted those change data uh, any change in data after the backup armen will trigger the archive log backup right so those archive log piece will be having those change data and if you want to apply those archive logs uh you know you need a wallet at your target side i i'm quickly going to show you that demo uh let let's jump into the demo so this is about uh, uh this is about the successful scenario when when there is no compression and no encryption it means it means just just to give a clause on that what i'm talking about assuming that there are no change data on your encrypted table space or encrypted column and your backup is successful and you will be able to restore it uh at your target database you no need of wallet and if there is any change data during the backup and your recovery will fail you need to copy that wallet in order to do a successful restore and suppose there are no change in data there are no change in data and you are taking a successful backup and you will not be able to restore it at your target said when you are not able to restore it any of these scenarios if you are taking a backup as a compressed backup set or if you are enable the encryption and any of this scenario if you enable the compression or enable the encryption even though there is no change in the data of those encrypted data your backup will fail because once you enable the compression and once you enable the encryption whether there is a the change in data or whether there is no change in data your restore needs a wallet for in case of compression and in case of encryption 
uh, i'm talking about only if there is no compression and if there is no encryption and if there are no change in data of those encrypted columns or encrypted table space you will be able to do a successful restore and in the rest all other scenario in the rest other scenario like if the compression and encryption is enabled whether there is a change in the data or no change in the data of those compressed uh, table space all the scenario will get fail right so i'll show you that uh, let's I, i hope this is uh, clear any any questions here can tde enabled uh, over a column level uh, as well as column level right tde is made for column level encryption and the table space level encryption these are the two it is supported right let's see i hope this is clear uh, and then backup set and coming to the image copies also same thing if there is no compression and no encryption you should be able to do a successful restore and rest other scenario it will fail for sure and again whether it's a password based also the same if no compression no encryption and no change in data you will be able to do a successful restore okay so and then let's get into the quickly demo session uh, okay let's uh, take the command so let's log into my database here so meantime uh, if you have any questions you can ask me so let's uh, verify my wallet yeah my wallet is in this location it is in open state just exit and go to this one and do ll and this is my wallet and this is my sso auto login everything is ready so next uh, select uh, db table space oh sorry so this is encrypted table space you can see here encryption is enabled and let's go and some table with encrypted column you can see i have a table employee and table employee underscore one and these are the column first name is encrypted salary is encrypted employee id is salary encrypted and if i can check it out count and this is the count you can see this much entries here and if i check other table and other table also has like three entries and everything is encrypted here and if i can check uh, my data files of my database these are my uh, data files right so our main target so let's take a full backup uh, right like connected to our main and uh, i will show you this one show all and if you see here configuration database for uh, configuration encryption for database is on i will make it off because if your database encryption that uh, your encryption is on or your compression is on for sure your restore will fail because that needs a wallet so let's make it off command is just simple make off oh off right show all again right so now it become off and simple command run allocate channel uh, cross check backup set cross check rkl or delete rkl or delete no prompt like these are like deleting old backups and backup as a backup set you can see this is very very important backup as a backup set i'm not using backup as a compressed backup set if you use a compressed backup set for sure your restore needs a wallet the two scenarios if you make a compressed backups you need a wallet for sure for the restore and if you enable the encryption for sure you need a wallet on your target machine right now i'm doing backup as a backup set database and this is the format and plus rk log and this is the format and backup uh, current control file and i'm taking everything here and quickly i'll go here and check there are no backups here exit and see there is no backups here under user on backup let connect back to our main and quickly run this one it will be very quick uh, so we are doing which scenario we are, we are doing on 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 uh, this this first scenario taking a backup at 10 am and 11 am one hour backup and there is no assuming there are no change in data no change in encrypted data right there is no change in encrypted data 
so backup database and backup as a backup set both are the same or different backup as a backup database backup database what it will say right it will take all the data file backup as a backup pieces not the backup set if it is a backup as a backup set your backup pieces are combined together as a backup set right so now backup is done and i'll go back and i'll check here you can see these are my right these are my backups quickly i can pass these backups scp star i'll i'll copy it to the my target this is my target database oracle at the rate uh, this is my target ip 10384107 10.38.4.107 and I'll move it to the same location user and backup. What happened? Why it is not pinging? Let's, uh, okay. Let's check here what happened to my server. Oh, it is not responding. Cat etc. Or a tab. Sorry, cat etc. Hosts. Um. Okay. Host name. Will I be able to ping this one? Okay, so let's see SCP star Oracle at the rate U01 backup connection loss. So yeah, let's see why I'm not able to connect. I have config. Okay, and now it's responding. The CP star Oracle the U01 backup. Oh, I hope there won't be any backups here. Oh, okay, there are some backups. Let me remove that RM star. Let me cancel this one. RM star, okay, nothing here in the target. I don't have anything. Let me copy it once again. It'll be very quick. Uh, okay, so few questions. Uh, if there are any overload or delay, if we take only backup uh, database uh, without using, no backup, uh, of course, you know, uh, there's a overload if you take a backup uh, database, because if you have like a thousand of data file, it will create a thousands of backup pieces. There's no point in taking, uh, you know, those many backup pieces because it has to read thousand headers and it has to restore thousand headers. Uh, that's a overload. And if you take a backup as a backup set, it will combine, uh, you know, uh, 10 data files, 20 data files. Uh, you know, as for the what, as for the limit, what backup set uh, size you you set it, Armin internally calculate and it will take a backup set, and you know that will be much faster if you take a backup as a backup set. Mayank is asking, can we uh, can you please explain the scenario where uh, uh, standby FRA is full? Okay, Mayank, that is a different uh, topic. Standby, we will take it later, but right now TD backups and recoveries. Okay, now backups are copied. Uh, I can see here backups are ready. Let's uh, do a restore. Okay, now backups are copied and uh, let me quickly verify if I have anything old data, anything related to here, nothing. These are my uh, old target database directory structure, nothing is here. I'm just uh, making sure that everything I'm clearing it out, whatever the old content. Right, so there are some things here. I will remove this directory. RM and RF star. Okay, done. So it's all done now. Let's uh, do a recovery here. I'm just connecting to my database. I'm. This is my P file. I'm just starting. Already P file copied here. I'll just start start up no mount P file. I'm just starting here. My my instance is started here. Right, let's connect to Armian prompt. 
connected vara 12c not mounted because we just started with no mount and now restore control file and this control file name is this one this is the control file we have taken right so i will just rename this one right so this is a control file restore control file right control file restored right you can see control file 1 control file 2 both the control one is on data disk group uh, so one is on data location and one is on fra so control file restore done alter database mount i'll mount my database yeah database mounted now catalog start with whatever under user and backup everything it will catalog yeah this is just uh, okay this is uh, auto backup control file so i should have removed that one but let let's see no issues uh, i'll just go this is my control file what we copied under user and backup and this was my old uh, under fra location there was auto backup which has taken control file backup no issues in that so i'll just catalog that right that's done and now i'll do run restore database switch data file to copy oh sorry that should be not switch data file to copy that should be where is the command um enter database catalog start with we did a catalog and command should be restore database switch data file all and recover uh, database okay anything switch data file all whatever you can do it there no backup is okay give me a second let let's see that particular command a restored switch data file all no not this one switch data file all switch data file all restore catalog starts with okay let's uh, remove those remove that uh, uh remove this this is this is the known issues right uh, you have to clean up whatever your target database before you attempt to any restore because it try to read your uh, old backup information try to switch uh, try to restore those backups i'll remove this uh, old backup rm if an rf right let's now do one more time catalog catalog starts with database control file okay yeah, i'll just shut down it has used the sorry i had to go to it has used that latest control file which was uh, from the our main auto auto backup uh, directory shut uh, sorry i had to uh, okay i'll do one thing i'll just exit and i'll kill this instance and then i'll remove directly the files this is the one kill minus 9 and i'll kill that okay that was killed and you have to clean up those control file whatever you restored so let's go back to data file and let's verify data file no data file and let's go to control file location and control file this is the one which restored i'll remove that control file and i'll go to control file 2 and this is the control file 2 rm remove right removed and then uh, and then what else arc logs let's go to arc logs yeah i remove this one arc log directory right uh, rm hyphen rf star okay arc log directory removed and what else we have here uh, online logs let's verify online logs these are the old uh, setup we have to make sure that uh, especially remain especially related to control file everything should be re removed when you do the catalog it try to it try to catalog the, the latest control file from the from the auto backup and then it try to restore that okay nothing is here and archives also yeah nothing is there. now everything is cleaned up let's uh, start instance one more time it's very simple 
and then start up no amount. Right now, our main. Okay, sorry. Our main target slash and restore control file. And this is a control file what we took. Already copied that one. Restore control file done. Now I'll do ultra database mount. Okay, now you do the catalog one more time. Right now it is only cataloging the backup control file what we took. Yes, done. Now run this. See, it is able to do the restore. So what happened earlier, let me go back to that earlier scenario. When you did your uh, control file restore, went fine. And then you, did, you mounted your database. And when you did a catalog starts with, even though you specified your backup location, user on backup, and it found out the control file information. And along with that, there is a one old control file, which was available in the auto backup location. This was the control file backup. And when we did catalog, it cataloged both. And when we tried to do the restore and recovery, it's trying to restore using that auto backup control file. And it says data file copy not found. And that is where you know you are failing this backup scenario. And then what we did, we removed that uh, the, the control file information because that's the whole control file. We don't need that. And then what we did, we logged in and we cleaned up instance and we went back and we cleared our uh, whatever the restored control file, we cleared it and went to this uh, archaeologs. We cleared that archaeolog and we went to online log and the old control file. Where is that old control file? We removed, right? Uh, where is that? Yeah, here it is. Oh, no. Where we cleaned up that. Oh, somewhere we cleaned up, right? Uh, auto backup. Control file, here it is. Not control file. Oh, Satish, uh, you are not able to hear. How about others? Uh, are you guys able to hear my voice? Is it uh, issue with the Satish? Satish, if you are issue, then uh, change your headset or, uh, yeah, it's all fine, it seems. Okay, yeah, we cleared, uh, where is that, man? Uh, we cleared that uh, control file. Okay, uh, where is that? I'm going fast, I believe. Uh, even I'm not able to recollect where we cleared that. Uh, Yeah, we, we cleared that control file and then now we did a, a started instance and it started here and went to our main and we did a restore control file and we did a catalog now. And now if you do this time when we did a catalog and it cataloged only that backup information. And then we did a, just a our main restore switch data file and recover database. And then it restored all my data files. And, and you can see, right, it restored and also it went for recovery, started media recovery, and then it applied all the archaeologs. You can see these are my archaeolog. Uh, it applied all the archaeologs. And then this is a known issue. This is uh, our main known issues. And you know we have only sequence 147, and it's trying to apply the one extra sequence, that is 148. And it says unable to find that 148 sequence, and that is where it failed. So this is a known fact. You can ignore this one. And if you want quickly, uh, you can directly connect back to, and don't get confused with that error message. Just I'll quickly show you one more time. Uh, SysDBA, select, uh, what is the command man? Select max sequence. I'm very weak in remembering the command. I'm just Googling it, select max uh, sequence, right? Max sequence uh, from our catalog. So 526, okay, this is different scenario. I will tell you that uh, SCN number, let me see the SCN number, uh, SCN number.
Okay, select SCN number. Uh, I don't know, like, uh, this is the max SCN number. Okay, this is the different scenario. Uh, I will explain that. Uh, my my current scenario, my current thread. Okay, let me verify that. Otherwise, it will be like confused for you guys as well. Because I did this database restore and then I have not uh, reset my SCN number. Okay, uh, show parameter or else what I'll do, I will go to archaeolog. Okay, show parameter recovery. Cheat. Because I wanted to show you this this particular SCN, uh, you know, you, you may you may say that you know your uh, your database is not up to date, right? So I will just uh, go to this archive and I will show you that archive, uh, the latest archive, archive, CD or a twelve C. I'm going to my archive location, and this one, and this is my archives, and this is my today's directory. And if I go here, okay, you can see right archive, the latest archive is 147. And if you see here, we taken a backup up to 147 archive logs. And now if you see here up to 147, it applied and it tried to apply 148 and 148 archive number is not available. And you know, that will fail. That is, uh, you know, you don't get confused with, you know, your recovery failed. Your recovery has been successful and it is up to date. And you know, your database is now ready to open with a reset log. And now I will simply alter database, open reset log. That will take a few seconds. Without reset, is without reset log, it's not possible because uh, when you restore your control file, you have to open your database with a reset log without that not possible if you are reached if you used a world control file and if you restored only the data files then no need to open database with the reset log okay let's uh, okay database is open now and let's quickly verify the verify the verify the verify the okay information right let's connect to database exit connect back to database and go here see your database wallet is pointed to the location from whatever the source location it pointed to the same location and status is not available wallet is unknown and then if i go to the table space you see encrypted table space although restored and if you see this encrypted columns everything is restored and if you want to check the count you can see the count and if you see the other table count it has restored right everything is done but the only thing is if you want to try to do a select star from that is where you will see that error message while it is not open you will be able to do a restore recovery everything goes fine and you know only thing is you will not be able to access those encrypted data and if i exit and if i go to this wallet location and no such a file or directory while it is not available. So this is what I wanted to show uh, in, in this demonstration. Uh, when when you were, uh, okay, where is that uh, presentation? When you were doing a without compression and without encryption, and if you take a full backup and try to restore it without wallet, it will go fine. Provided the caveat is there should not be any change in the data. Right, and rest other scenarios, if you have any compression or encryption, definitely it will fail, you need a wallet. So for that, I already demonstrated the scenario here. Uh, okay, this one, if you see here, same scenario, and if you see the backup command here, backup as a backup set, this is a, this is a scenario with what we tested. And the second scenario, if you see here, where is that backup information? Okay, backup as a compressed backup set. I took a compressed backup set, and then when I when I did a restore and recovery, you see, when I did a restore and recovery, that is where you know I got 
a warning or error message while it is not opened when your backups are compressed or backups are encrypted you want you are not able to do a restore itself you forget about the recovery it will not be successful your restore itself is not successful your restore needs a wallet and again for recovery also you need a wallet and the third scenario third scenario is for i have enabled a database encryption you can see configure encryption for database on that is on show all you can see encryption is on now and encryption is on if you see here what i'm doing backup as a backup set see i am doing a backup as a backup set and it is not a compressed you just imagine it is not a compressed backup set so if it is not a compressed backup set the restore should work fine but whereas at my armen setting i have encrypted my backup so then backup went fine and then when it comes to the recovery you can see again wallet is not opened this is the third scenario and if you go to the fourth scenario by both compression and encryption my encryption is on so where is here encryption is on and the backup as a compressed backup set both are enabled that is my fourth scenario compression is on and encryption is on and when you do the rest backup will be fine and when you do the restore and the error message is wallet is not open and similarly like fifth scenario is with the with the backup as a backup image copy the fifth scenario is backup as a image copy if i go back to that and i will show you the command and i made this encryption off and then if you see what is the command for that run set control file configure device type let me remove this right this is the backup script set control file auto backup configure device type to disk allocate channel cross check copy delete no expired copy backup incremental level 1 for recover that is a backup incremental level 1 for recover copy this copy is very very important you are taking it as a image copy and then cross check archive log all and then delete no prompt right this is just a backup as a incremental level 1 and then backup will be successful and then i will go to the recovery scenario i started my instance with a p file and then restore control file done and alter database mount catalog starts with catalog is fine and switch database as a copy see here the restore recovery scenario will be very easy instead of that uh, restore recover what you are doing here switch database as a copy directly whatever the backup is it will directly convert it as a data file and then recover database and your recovery will goes fine and again this is looking for a sequence number 50 and media recovery will be fine alter database open reset logs and your database will be opened and again wallet status is unknown and your encrypted data will be available and entire tables will be available and when you try to access the data that is where it says wallet is not opened so that is about uh, the the fifth scenario which is the successful and rest other scenarios as as same as whatever uh, log i showed so that is about the today's uh, session so that's it for the today's live demonstration what i wanted to show you uh, i think there are a lot of questions let's take it one by one or else i can unmute uh, you know everyone so that you know everyone can unmute themselves and uh, they can directly ask the question rather than uh, unmute all like you know if anybody has a question go one at a time and uh, uh, you know we can we can take it up uh, amit has some question why are we using switch data file all here can we simply use a restore and recover yeah obviously you can use a switch data file and recover data file uh, re uh, re restore data file and recover data file uh, that's also possible and you can use it other else you can use a switch data file that's also possible how to restore level 1 backup Uh, in res uh, reset log uh, after level zero. No, like if you have level zero and level one backup, you should have all the backup in the same location. You have to catalog them, and you have to do the restore database and recover database, and again restore to the point in time and recover to the point in time. You can use uh, you can use any method, and then you can restore your database. 
Okay, so what else? Are we using a switch data file all here? Can't we simply use? Yeah, that's already answered. Uh, you can use switch data file or restore record database. Any, anything you can use. Again, restore record uh, to any point in time, you can use it. Uh, there are like, I think I have, I have that Armen scenario. We had already taken few scenarios with that Armen. And uh, you can use uh, simply restore database, recover database, and also restore and recover. You can use it to use it to until SCN, like restore database until SCN or until time, until sequence and until restore point. So what, what we seen here, uh, it tried to restore a sequence number, this one. You can use this sequence number here until a uh, SCN number. Or you know already it tried restoring 148 archive, right? You can use that 147. You can use until, until sequence 147. You can use that one. And if you have any restore point, and you can use that restore point for your restore and recovery. Uh, hi, Mali. Uh, I have one yep. question. Yep. Uh, how to resume a failed RMM backup? Uh, I have a five terabyte database. Okay. Okay. Uh, after uh, after I think two terabyte uh, somehow it got uh, aborted. Yeah. Uh, yep. I want to resume from there. No, it will uh, default. You no need to do anything. Like uh, once the backup is uh, failed with some restore is failed with some cause. Like, you know, no, not no, able not to restoration. I'm taking a backup backup. Uh, no backup resume backup resume is, uh, I think not possible, uh, back only the restore and recovery is possible. When, when the backup fails, uh, there's no option to resume it. You have to, okay. it has so to start only, from the sketch. No, it's a five terabyte database. Uh, yeah. almost I have spent a 10 hours. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, that uh, is uh, the job become orphan that the job will be cleared automatically. There's no option to control on the backup uh, resume. So, but whereas it comes to the restore and recovery, when the restore okay. and recovery fails, uh, okay. you just need to do the restore and recovery again. It will skip all the restored file and it will start it from whichever the missing files. Okay. So even restore, uh, if it is two terabyte is uh, restore, then if I restore again, it will skip whatever restore happened. Whatever the restored data files, it will skip. It says the already restored is done. And then it'll okay. resume it from which, whatever the missing files. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just, just we... add on, add one point, uh, Malik. Even, even I noticed actually. So, like uh, sometimes, like when we, when the restore was failed, right? So yeah. few DBAs will drop the data files using RM minus RF. So at that time it will go from scratch. If you don't yeah, use yeah, yeah. RM minus RF, so it will uh, start where it was uh, 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 left. Uh, That's correct. That's correct. No, it, uh, even though it's not exactly the pause. It will try to restore those files and it says it's already restored and it will skip. You can see the log message. It says that already file restored and it is available and it will, it will say that skipping this particular data file restore and it will go to the next file. That yeah, overhead will be there reading that correct. header and then trying to check it in the control file. Oh, and then it says that it's already restored and then it will skip that and it will go to the next file. That overhead, yeah. that time information will be there. Yeah, we should not do RM minus RF. Yeah. 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 Okay. I have one more question uh, regarding wallet. Uh, yeah. I I don't have any uh, wallet files allocated in my database, but I have seen uh, Oracle Home admin location. Uh, uh, there is a one directory was created by default. Okay, mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. that directory, uh, XDB wallet something. Uh, mm -hmm. In that directory, we have a uh, ten databases. Okay, all ten database directory was created. In that, uh, there was a SSO file and e wallet. Both files are were there. Mm -hmm. okay, but uh, my database is not, uh, I have not enabled TDE. Mm -hmm. Okay, those files were created automatically or how will take? No, uh, your wallet, <laughs> no, wallet file will never create automatically. It has to be created by somebody, mm -hmm. either your OEM, uh, so you can create many methods, right? Oh. You can be SQL, OEM, whatever it is, but the point is somebody has to be created in the past and it is not necessarily for that database. For example, this server, this server, mm -hmm. I have three databases here. Okay. okay. I have this, this database, I have three databases and this was my default uh, wallet location, uh, which is, this is my default wallet location. I have okay. differentiated with the database name here. So instead of that, if somebody has created like, like this, uh, admin, if somebody has created this as your wallet location, instead of that, instead of database, or else you can go back one step. 
if you are assuming that this is your wallet location user in app oracle and if you create mkdr wallet right if you create NKB, mkdr wallet and then this is your wallet location and then you have to create individual database wise directories and you have to use the individual wallet and if you give this particular wallet file and you will be messing up your all the wallet information because you are trying to create a wallet for this database or a 12c you are trying to create under the same directory and or a cdb or a cdb also you are trying to create on the same directory and or a crl is going to create on the same directory eventually what happens it will overwrite for example i have this or a crl like or a 12c wallet here in this location and that is available and then somebody has set the password for something for that wallet password and you created a wallet for this or a cdb Uh, with a different password and it will overwrite that particular existing file and then oh. the old one will be lost so this database will be in danger situation yeah. so you have to can use the individual directory for creating the wallet yeah i got it can you go to uh, cd oracle home and uh, admin location oracle home or oracle base oracle home oracle home admin Ad uh, can you uh, ls let me have There is a XDB wallet. Admin, no, nothing is there. Here, there, there is the directory. Okay, but XDB uh, wallet. Uh, oh, this is uh, uh, no, this is the internal. This is uh, if you install this, uh, there is a XDB component. Let me see in the in the Oracle mask. Give me a second. If you if you notice your Oracle installation, right, the database creation log file, hmm. uh, it will create this. Uh, xdb component let's see uh, in this directory xdb wallet it has created almost 10 i have 10 databases it created around 10 yeah, directory yeah 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 that is directory a two files no if you have 10 databases uh, yeah yeah uh, those 10 database directory was created here and uh, all the c wallet and e wallet both files are there uh -huh, okay well, like you know uh, it has to be re that's uh, the other file should be as a backup because you cannot have two files with the same name right yeah, yeah. e wallet and c wallet both files are there yeah 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 like correct e files are created automatically yeah and that that is correct like no this is xdb comes into picture this is see if you okay let me see whether that comp xdb component is installed in my database or not if you don't install that xdb component in your database uh, you you no need to uh, You, you 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 delete even though if you delete also doesn't matter for this oh, okay okay let's see i will show you that xdb component uh, okay what is that command uh, uh, there's a there's a com there's a this this is xml this, this is a xml something xml uh, database this is an internal like you know for uh, yeah i can say what like apex especially for if you are using a uh, express applications and all right that time mm -hmm. you know they will install this xdb database and that xml uh, uh, component will be there if you if you don't use that component there is no point keeping this wallet okay got it got yeah it. and i believe this is uh, starting with the 12c uh, if i'm not wrong that X, xdb and all uh, starting with the 12c it came 11g i don't know i might not be noticed but uh, i seen it from starting with the 12c but 11g i let me verify that yeah but but it is only for uh, when you have xml component and xdb installed on the database and uh, you know that is where you see this one and uh, this will be used for uh, apex uh, oracle uh, apex applications express applications no oh, okay 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 so anything we missed in the chat uh, i'm not sure uh, where i can get uh, armen uh, senior document okay well shared okay yeah yeah hi uh, this is satish um actually suppose if you have a, a primary and standby so if you are creating the td on some primary side do we need to yeah. create a, on standby side as well or we just copy yeah. the wallets no you have to copy the wallets uh, to the standby that's more than enough no need to create okay so same as for in golden gate or you have to create in golden gate uh golden it's gate uh, i don't know like i never worked on the golden gate uh, i think anybody can who has worked on the golden gate they can comment here okay. sorry for that i i um, i never worked okay. yeah okay sir no no problem thank you yeah, for yeah, uh, yeah. 
Okay, so what else? Anything we missed in the chat? Uh, no, right? Okay. Yeah, almost we covered. Yeah, we are almost uh, on time. Uh, already exceeded 15 minutes. Uh, if no questions, we can uh, we can wind up today's session. So do we need valid uh, uh, compressor backups? Even yeah. when we don't have uh, encryption? If you have encryption and compression in your backups and your wallet should be needed for the restore and the recovery. Whether there is a data change, I already explained, right? Whether you have a, uh, whether data change or no data change of your encrypted data. And if your backups are compressed or encrypted and you need the wallet for sure. That's why I showed you this scenario. Uh, this scenario talks about when you are taking a backup as a compressed backup. And even though there is no change in the data and my restore got failed here while it is not opened. And this is for the encryption backups. Yeah, I will share all these uh, logs what I captured in our group. So you can keep a reference for that. Okay, fine then. So if no questions, then yeah, Malik, one, 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 this one, is my, this question, is my Malik. first session, Malik. Uh, really appreciated your uh, hard work and thanks for uh, doing the great session. Please go, keep going. Yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, you know, yeah. Uh, and uh, this is Satish Malik. Actually, I am also following recently in YouTube. So then I uh, today only I, I, I subscribed in Telegram. So then only I come to know there is yeah, a session. Yeah, yeah, No, this so, uh, sorry, uh, like you know, uh, it's very helpful and uh, yeah, very needed yeah. uh, nowadays. So yeah. Good, good. So then these live sessions are you know already announced like you know last two months back, and it is the ninth live okay. session every Saturday around seven thirty. Uh, we'll be conducting mm -hmm. this and, uh, and the information will be available in our telegram group and definitely this is uh, like you know uh, win win situation you and you guys will understand even i will get more knowledge uh, you know it, it will be helpful for everyone you know uh, always the motto what i believe is you know keep sharing your knowledge and you know keep learning and one thing i can i i, I am surprising some how you are managing the time and the preparing everything so you are spending much time on this let me let me <laughs> stop recording and then we can pause for like you can talk for a few minutes <laughs> okay yeah <laughs> um.